know, it is quite controversial and has no clear answer for that. I, I'm, I just assume that perhaps uh, some of you here, or you, maybe most of you here, have had the opportunities to travel and to go to other parts of the world, right? So, uh, have you been to the US or UK yet? Yes. Have you had any? Yes. So, you are quite simple, right? So, the kind of American English that you are exposed to here, how different or how similar do you find when you are in, or when you were in the U.S.? Uh, maybe only on the, maybe only on the correct grammar, but when it comes to speaking, uh, comparing Philippine English to American English, uh, it is similar in the way that um, we can, we can say immediately what we want, what we think, and what we feel without really uh, caring very much about what other people might think if we say something. So, in, so do, do you know, now did you notice any differences between English spoken in New York and English spoken in uh, California, for example? Um, Based on my uh, observation, I think people in California, when they use uh, English, they are more actually uh, more relaxed and more uh, like more relaxed when they use the, the English. They don't normally use formal words, but they use like uh, colloquial or street words that they learned or invented on their own. And then when it comes to uh, people from New York, they tend to be more. Uh, they tend to be more grammatically correct and like every time they try to speak to other people. Thank you very much. Yeah. And actually, so we can say that actually people, whether they are in New York or whether they are from California, right? They are, at least as I said, in vertical comma, they are considered native speakers of English. But as you just said, they don't necessarily speak the same English. Right. And you can, and you just made a, in a comment that people in the north, northern uh, coast right, tends to or tend to speak more grammatically correct English. But right. so whose English should we follow? Because even within America or within England, there are different Englishes or at least you know the standard. There are different standards within one country. So we can be honest, and, um, and if you are interested, you may want to read the book of Tom MacArthur when he talks about English spoken by the African community of Black English in America. Even though they were born there and they have used, they have they always speak English, but the English they speak is not considered good English. It's not considered standard English. Why is that? Why is that? Okay. Um, can I make a another comment? Sorry. I, I lived in California for one year and nine months, and I noticed that, you know, for example, if I'd say I'd pass by the church, they actually, they don't say anything, but they find that funny, because what you're supposed to say is, I'm going to the church. I'm not passing by. It, it's like when you drop something off at the church, you don't say pass by. A Filipino would say that. And But, on the other hand, um, just to show how funny it is, they spell their spelling is so bad. <laughs> I mean, I mean, bad in our case. I mean, Filipinos would take pride in spelling, but uh, in, in California, most of the people who wrote me letters usually had bad spelling, quote unquote. Yeah. So, and then yeah, they yeah they always wonder why Filipinos speak like we speak with so much words. They always wonder about that. So, so, so you can also may see that we all learn English at school here and, it, and as you said, you are more influenced by American English. But the way you speak English is not necessarily how they speak English over there. Because if we look at that, you know, there are different groups in a society and there, there are different standards in any society. And does it mean that whoever speaks English coming from North America is equally considered native speakers of English? But now I, I can tell you a lot of stories. I don't know whether it is the case here, but for many, many years, you know, uh, when people apply, when they advertise jobs, when they want English language teacher coming from overseas, 
They otherwise look like native speakers, British accent or native speakers, American accent. Right. But in reality, if you appear with a black face, perhaps they are not considered a native speakers. Even though you were born with that language, that is your home language for generations, you've been speaking the language, and but you don't have the face that people often associate with English, then you are not qualified. So, so in that sense, what I want to say is that when we talk about English or when we talk about language, it has a lot to do with racism as well, or with the social class. Yeah, and. So, so language, it has a lot to do with politics. And it, as I said, the same as English, it's, it's not as simple as it may appear. Okay? Um, and now, I do want to show you this. I don't know if it works here. Uh, there's no speakers. Huh? Sorry, there's no speakers. Are you are you familiar with this? Are you still not married? Yes. Okay. Are you familiar with that? You know, there is um, um, is from uh, a newspaper published in Singapore. I read it um, at the airport. Okay. And I just want to show you now. When I say Ayo, still not married, la, as Roy just said. Yeah, it is very, I think it's quite common or popular in Malaysia and Singapore when people use that. But do you use it here? No? And what do you use? It is a kind of, you know, people say that it's something very distinctive about Singaporean or Malaysian English. Ayo. Do you want to comment on it, please? Do you want to comment on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm familiar with I am familiar. Yeah. Um, uh, when, uh, I have friends in, in Malaysia and Singapore, and it's quite usual for them to add la when they speak English. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that like a high A or low? Oh, I don't know. It's a kind of exclamation. Maybe could be. Uh, I will still not marry. I don't know, but it's something like, as people tend to add it a lot when they speak English. Yeah? And particularly the word la. For example, when you say okay, okay, la, instead of saying okay. So when someone asks you, um, so are you busy tomorrow? No, I'm. Uh, I'm free, free la, okay, okay la, you can, you can come, come la, no problem, no worry la. So that, it's a kind of, they, they add a lot to how they speak. And they say that that is like some influence, some influence from the way they speak the, in their mother tongues. But they say that particular word la may not mean anything in English, but it means so much when they speak it. Because it, it, it has some, it carries some emotional or maybe some affective um, meanings. So even as you said, you say ma, right? You say ma here. Do you? No. Do you, do you have anything similar in, in Philippines when you speak English? Ma. Ma. Yourself. Right. No? 